Music is my life. Music allows me to make sense of myself, to make sense of my world, to respond to my world, and really importantly, to connect with others. Music allows me to mediate my inner pluralism, the cultural experiences I've had, and life in general. I was born in Nairobi, Kenya, and raised in central Alberta. As a person of color, I'm South Asian, and I'm also Ismaili Muslim. Racism and discrimination made living tremendously difficult as a child. Names like Fudgio, shit on a stick, Paki with a finger, and I'm not even from Pakistan made things very, very difficult. But I think, in hindsight, that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Because it caused me to question my identity and really ask, who am I? It allowed me to harness the rich richness of my cultural heritage and find creative ways to bring it together with the best of what Canada had to offer. And for me, music was the perfect medium. When I sang with others, it didn't matter if I was black or brown. It didn't matter if I was tall or short. It didn't matter if I was fat or thin. Because making music together was heaven in itself. The feeling I had of singing choral music reverberated in the same way as the feeling of when I recited devotional chants in the prayer hall. The unity of it was so profound. Even though the forms were different, the essence was the same. You know, I was so involved with choral music that one night I went to a church to sing with the choir. And a very close family member called my father with great concern, saying that, I'm afraid if you don't watch over Hussein, that because of singing in choirs, he will become Christian. Furthest from the truth. Singing in choirs helped me get closer to who I was. It helped me get closer to my cultural identity. It helped me make meaning. It helped me understand and it helped me understand others. I was able to feel a great sense of self-confidence, of self-worth and belonging. I was able to be Muslim and Canadian at the same time. This is the inspiration of the opening number that I perform for you. It combines three pieces of music. The first is called The Gift by my friend Russell Wallace of the Lilawat Nation. And it was sounds of the earth, vocables, we, he, he, yo. And for me, that expresses my gratitude for living on this wonderful land. The second 
was Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, taken from a Muslim text in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. And the third, a Gregorian chant, Ubi caritas et amor Deus ibi est, where there is love and charity, God is there. This is the inspiration, and this is the kind of work I do as a composer. In 2006, I was really lucky to be commissioned and commissioned from a choir called the Esoterics in Seattle, conducted by Eric Banks. And they premiered this work I entitled Mombasa Matatu Meditation. And that came about when I spent some time in Mombasa, Kenya, teaching music at the Aga Khan Academy. So you should know, um, and some of you have traveled in those parts of the world, there is a passenger van called Matatus. And there are these little vans that jettison through the traffic and are honking all the time. And near the school where I worked, there was a ferry terminal where all these matatus gather, and the noise of their honking to me sounded just like an orchestra tuning. But occasionally, there was this beautiful harmony that came out of it. At the same time, in Mombasa, there are many, many mosques in the area. And when it was the time for the call to prayer, I was so excited about hearing it for the first time because it's a call to peace, a call to prayer. But what did I hear? Six mosques, six voices, starting at different times, starting on different pitches, and definitely not in harmony. It was like the same sound I heard of the matatus, just noise. But eventually, there was this beautiful harmony, sometimes that creeped through. And that unity reminded me of the unity of humanity. And so I'll play you a little bit of that piece that you get an idea of. As you heard, the text combines the call to prayer as well as text from Surat al-Fatiha from the Holy Quran. I'd like to share with you my experience of that premiere. 
It was premiered in a cathedral. The very same kind of cathedral which caused concern for that family member. Hearing the azan and that composition sung by non-Muslims in, in a cathedral gave me a sense of belonging, a sense of hope, and a sense of strength that I never would have imagined in those early days in central Alberta. After the concert, one of the singers approached me. I believe he's a, he was non, a non-Muslim. And he said to me in tears, he said, when I recited the Allahu Akbar, your translation in the text in the program says, God is great. But he said, I realized when I recited that, that God was greater than anything you can ever imagine. I'm not sure if he understood more about Islam at that moment, but what was really powerful for me is that through singing the music of another, he was able to find a deep and personal connection within himself. Another wonderful project I've had such a blessing to be a part of is co-founding the Vancouver and Ismaili Muslim Youth Choirs. These are a group of singers who, like me, secretly sang in choirs in school. They tell me that their choral experience was very different than their experience of their religious life. It was separate. And so we decided, why don't we sing together and create something beautiful together? And that was so profound because what I realized is that we actually knew each other because we knew our value systems. We didn't have to get to know each other before making amazing music together. So we went on the search. Who are we? What's our identity? What's our music going to sound like? And we had to struggle because we couldn't share our ceremonial music publicly. So we found music of others that we resonated with. And it caused us to get to know ourselves better because we asked, how is this similar? How is this different? How does it connect us? There was a beautiful moment where we sang a Japanese folk song called Furusato at a local community center. And the youth relayed to me afterwards that there was a young woman in the audience who was weeping um, when she heard it. And for them, it was such a powerful experience because through singing, they were able to share their heart and touch someone else's heart. And for me, that joy was tremendous, especially in a time when I hear a lot from adults, oh, what's going to happen to our kids? You know, our kids are destructive and fragmented and all this. And I say, not at all. Our young people have amazing strength. Our young people have hope. Our young people have talent. And our young people have all the values we think that they don't have. We just need to give them a way to express those values and the tools to express them so they can do it positively. So I thought maybe at this moment we should sing together. I see lots of smiles, which, which makes me happy. Um, <laughs> so uh, if I can ask everyone to please stand. Okay. This is my dream choir. <laughs> okay, so very simple, very simple thing we're going to do is sing the word OM, O-M, all right? And we're going to use this pitch, OM, ready? And OM. Wow, okay, it's amazing already. But we're just going to do a couple of things. We're going to add a few more things. I see some of you standing like this, kind of like this, and your hands in your pocket. So just repeat after me, or do as I do, okay? Zip. Ah, and notice how much more uplifted you feel. <laughs> and boom. And yow. Yeah. Whoop. Whoop. And now sing. Oh. Do you hear the difference already? Now try this. Shape your mouth into the shape of an O. 
and then when you breathe in, you're going to breathe in and then sing. Okay, here we go. Oh. Add one more layer. When we breathe together, we sing together. When we breathe together, we breathe in beauty, we sing out beauty. Ready? Oh. There's a wonderful Chinese character for the word listen. It combines symbols for ear, eye, and heart. So this last time when you sing Om, listen with your ears, eyes, and heart. And let's see if we can bring this room into profound unity. Om. a moment of silence I don't want to break, but we only have 18 minutes, so please have a seat. <laughs> As you can see, this feeling of unity is that feeling of love, the feeling of pluralism, the feeling of hope. It's the very same feeling I felt when I sang in choirs and allowed me to function in this world. It's the very same feeling we need every young child in this country and around the world to feel. It's the very same feeling that tells me that we cannot cut music programs. We cannot spend billions on bombs. We should spend billions on music programs. Whether kids can sing or make instruments, make music with instruments, it doesn't matter. But we need to make music together. Um, you know, when we make music, what does it take? It takes care. It takes compassion. It takes generosity. It takes listening. It takes strength of self. Nobody is inferior or superior. We are together what we are. These are the very same values that are human values, that are the values that I learn about through my faith tradition, which allows me to connect lots of dots. So my big idea is what if everyone sang all the time on the streets, at work, at school, at home? I wonder if we wouldn't create such a common humanity that racism, abuse, poverty, lack of self-worth would not even be an option. Imagine if the government sang together every session. They would have no choice but to start from unity rather than opposition. Imagine if every corporation had a lunchtime choir. Wouldn't the connection between the people create for a much happier and more productive work environment? And imagine if the Vancouver Canucks sang every morning at their training camp. Would we not see a Stanley Cup in Vancouver? <laughs> So what can you do? You can sing whenever you like. Don't let anyone ever tell you your voice is terrible. Be caught singing in the car when someone drives to the stoplight. Sing with your families. Sing on the street. Don't wait for the Winter Olympics to sing on the streets or on the SkyTrain. Don't wait till you're drunk to sing. Just <laughs> sing. And I believe that when we sing together, we will embark together on that road to peace and harmony. Thank you very much. Yeah. That was taught to me. Um, it's by a woman named Sophia Song Healer in uh, the United States. And it combines four different cultural traditions. And it works out really beautifully. So that means we're going to sing in four different parts and we're gonna do it in five minutes, <laughs> all right? So maybe if we could all stand again, please. Okay, six minutes. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. this is awesome. Um, and make sure that if you're one of those people who someone's told you when you were six years old that you don't have a good voice and you can't join the choir and you've never sung again after that, 
make sure you like just throw all that baggage out, okay? Yeah. All right, here we go. So the first part, I'm going to use this little pitch pipe. So the words are Om, Mani, Padme, Hum. And then there are, very, there are many ways of pronouncing that, but it's a, from the Buddhist tradition. And it goes Om, Mani, Padme, Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Awesome. I think I only hear like 30% of the people in here singing. <laughs> so take that great breath together. And together we are more, more amazing and more powerful. Here we go. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Excellent. Keep that in your mind. The second part is from the Muslim heritage. La ilaha illallah. Say it with me. La ilaha illallah. Again. La ilaha illallah. And it ends with who at the end. Um, and it goes like this. La ilaha illallah. La which most of you will know, goes Glory. So do your best if you don't know it, just follow along with someone beside you. Allow each other's strength to uh, strengthen your, your, uh, yourself as well. Here we go. goes like this. Shalom Shanti. Shalom Shanti. Shalom Shanti. Excellent. And yes, you can take it down the octave. So we're going to split into four parts. Um, let's say one. Om Mani Padmi Hum. La ilaha illallah. Shalom Shanti. And glow. Shalom. <laughs> uh, om, ma, ni, ni, n i, ni, pad, me, hum. Yeah, here we go. We'll practice it. We need to. And om, ma, ni, pad, me, hum. Om, ma, ni, pad, me. Keep it going. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Shalom Shanti. Beautiful.